Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Pata and I'm a formulation chemist. Today I'm going to be reviewing Crave Beauty's newest product launch, the Oatsu Simple Water Cream. Crave Beauty's Oatsu Simple Water Cream was formulated by Dr. Kim Do Hoon, who has many years of formulating experience, and he actually also formulated one of my favorite products of all time, the Laneige Water Sleeping Mask. And I actually purchased the Oatsu Simple Water Cream right after I watched the interview with Leah, so you can really say that the interview was the reason why I purchased the Oatsu Simple Water Cream. And if you're at all interested um, in watching the interview, then I will leave a link in the description box down below for you to watch. Now, I really enjoyed watching the interview because the formulator usually doesn't get any of like the glory, you can say, when it comes to creating the products. It's usually like the face of the brand that kind of gets the glory in creating the product if that makes sense. So I really enjoy and appreciate Leah's formulator interviews because she kind of shares that glory with her formulators which usually isn't typically seen. I also think that it's very transparent of her and her brand and it makes her and her brand a little bit more um, personable. Another reason why I really enjoyed watching the formulator interviews is because I really understand how the formulator felt at times during the interview. For example, like when customers are just a little bit particular. Mm. 굉장히 까다롭습니다. 뭐 회사도 까다롭고. Which this isn't necessarily a bad thing. It could just mean that the customer has a high standard. And if you think about it, at the end of the day, that's like a really good thing for the customer to have a high standard for their product because they're just looking out for the best for their own consumer. Another thing that I kind of relate to is having to communicate with customers and having to constantly send different samples to the customer for them to evaluate, for them to feel, and to try to see what they would like to be adjusted, and so on. Many opinions, many claims, and many efforts to make it and then of course the no list that all customers provide. <laughs> now all of that was kind of just like love and fun and the reason I say that is because with different customers comes different formulation challenges and these challenges really make it fun on the bench because it really helps the formulator to kind of learn and to grow no matter how much experience the formulator has. The Oatsu Simple Water Cream is $28 and you do get 2.7 fluid ounces of product. It comes in this cute little jar and it also comes with a small little spatula inside. I personally think that this is a fair price when you compare price to ounces of other products to them. So you do get quite a bit of product in this. I know that some people may wonder why this product would cost $28 when there is only 9 ingredients in the product and there isn't like a really special ingredient in it. But if you watch the formulator interview, you'll see that this product took quite a bit of time to create and there were multiple samples that had to be made to create this final product. I was actually really surprised when I opened the It's a Simple Water Cream because it was a little more luxurious looking than I expected for a nine ingredient product. I didn't expect it to be such a rich looking but light feeling product and I absolutely love the texture. One thing that I want to point out is that this product was created with fungal acne in mind, hence the restricted ingredients list. And it's also silicone, gluten, fragrance, and essential oil free, which I personally really like these kinds of free from claims in comparison to other free from claims from different products. Now, because of the choice to shorten the ingredients list, it actually is fairly difficult from a formulation perspective to formulate with such limitations. And the reason I say this is because with products like creams, they typically require different categories and classes of ingredients that will form the product, make it stable, make it feel nice, and make it effective. So from a formulation standpoint and the work that I personally know would have had to come about to create this kind of product, I feel like the price is definitely justifiable. In any case, this is a very luxe looking product despite having such a short IL which I'm actually really surprised about. <laughs> so the brand does provide a breakdown of the IL on their website, but I just wanna go like the smallest step further in breaking down the IL. Starting from the top, we have water. So from what I've seen in red, water and the oat extract are actually used at about 80% in combination for the formula. So in combination, they are basically the vehicle for this product. And the reason why the water and the oat extract are separated on the IL is because of different regulations that require the oat and the water to be listed separately. 
Personally, that doesn't bother me. I know that it does bother some people because it is the main um, selling point and main marketing ingredient of the product. And so they were a little disappointed to see that the oat extract was seen so far down on the IL. Now, I guess the only way to get the oat extract higher on the IL would be to increase the oat extract concentration. And I guess the only way to kind of do that would be to have the raw material manufacturer increase the oat extract concentration in the raw material itself. And that may or may not require a different vendor for this to kind of thing to occur. But in my opinion, it all really depends on the stability and the quality of the raw material in itself. And if this just happens to be the product that comes out of it, then this happens to be what comes out of it. And so I personally have no issues with what this is. Next on the IL is butylene glycol. So this ingredient is actually like a fairly like controversial ingredient in general, which makes me love the fact that they included it in the product. Now butylene glycol is an ingredient that is a humectant and it will have hygroscopic tendencies to draw water to the skin. I know that I've seen some people say that they prefer the addition of glycerin rather than butylene glycol in the product because of the controversies behind butylene glycol. But I think that having glycerin in a fungal acne in mind kind of product isn't really the right fit for this kind of product. So I do think that butylene glycol is a definite fair choice for this kind of product. The oils used are caprylic capitriglyceride and squalene, which are typically fungal acne safe emollients. Caprylic capric triglyceride is one of the most widely used emollients in personal care applications and the reason for that is because of its low viscosity that results in a silky smooth emollient but non-greasy feel on the skin and that's what makes it such a popular choice and also it's very um, usually it's fairly inexpensive. Now squalene so I will actually probably talk about squalene in like a far off video so I won't talk too much about it what you should need to know about squalene is that it is a very great emollient to use. It is an emollient that is very similar to our own skin's oil, our own skin sebum, which makes it that much easier for it to kind of absorb into our skin. It is also a drier oil, which means that it will work into our skin very quickly as well. I think that the combination of both the cap cap triglyceride and the squalene in the product provides the product with this beautiful sheen that you can see as soon as you open the jar and upon application of the product. The product spreads so easily on the skin and it has a very quick play time which I think is also a result from the drier oils that are used. Next, 1,2-hexane-diol. So 1,2-hexane-diol is actually a solvent that is usually paired with um, preservatives to kind of boost the preservative efficacy. It's also a multifunctional ingredient that typically has um, moisturization um, effects on the skin. But because Crave states that it is a solvent, I'm just going to go ahead and say that it's a solvent that is used to kind of dissolve other substances into the product. Now, in my opinion, I think that the big players in creating this beautiful texture for the product is the behenol alcohol and the ammonium acryloyl dimethyltorate VP copolymer. I had to read it. <laughs> The copolymer is a rheological viscosity controlling ingredient that will provide a gel consistency. It also gives the product the capability of creating sort of like a pseudo emulsion where oil droplets are dispersed within the gel that is formed. Now including behenol alcohol, which is a fatty alcohol, actually gives the product a more opaque look and it also helps to stabilize the product itself. So both the behenol alcohol and the copolymer are really responsible for the stability of the product as well as allowing for it to be so rich and white looking. So lastly, ethylhexoglycerin. This is also a multifunctional ingredient that has preservative capabilities to fight against gram-positive bacteria. The combination of 1,2-hexane-diol and ethylhexoglycerin is surprisingly enough to preserve the product and prevent growth from occurring. That's just something I'm surprised about, so just ignore that. But I do think that the formula did an amazing job in choosing multifunctional ingredients that do not have much skin sensitivity. Overall, I think that the ingredient choices for this product were extremely intentional, and I do really appreciate the fact that they did put so much thought into creating this product. I definitely applaud both Leah and the formulator as they were able to create such a rich and beautiful looking product with a beautiful texture despite the limitations in the ingredients list. Now let's talk about my overall experience with the product. 
so I definitely love the look and the feel of the product I definitely love the texture of the product the product applies very beautifully and upon very application my skin feels extremely moisturized and it doesn't leave a greasy after feel my skin definitely feels um, silky and definitely very smooth I think what this product does lack is the fact that it doesn't have that much of an occlusive property on my skin and because of the IL and the intention of the product I can kind of understand why there isn't much of an occlusion property in this product and if you look at the IL there isn't really like a true like occlusive ingredient in the product and it doesn't have like heavier oils per se in the product so I can definitely understand that I think what you need to take into consideration is the fact that there is a particular intention with this product for fungal acne prone skin and of course there is a limitation in the ingredients choices that they can have and the ingredient list also there are only like two main like stabilizing ingredients in this product so you can only do so much with the choices that you have at hand now this product definitely isn't like a one and done kind of product and both Leah and the formulator both recognize this. They actually um, recommend pairing the water cream with another Great Beauty product which is the Great Barrier Relief. And the Great Barrier Relief has 10% um, Tamani oil which is actually like a heavier oil and it has ceramides and other natural moisturizing factor ingredients that would pair very well with the water cream itself. Now, a reason why I do like this product is because it is such a plain Jane. It's a product that only has ingredients that are actually really necessary to just create the product, to create the backbone, to create like a template and a good base for other products. So you can really use the water cream in combination with just about any of the skincare products that you already own to kind of personalize your own routine. Now I personally like to mix the water cream with a little bit of squalane to provide my skin with a little bit of emolliency and again squalane is an ingredient that is typically fungal acne safe and it's also a great emollient overall for just about anyone. Now if I do need a little bit more occlusion I will definitely go in with the Great Barrier Relief before adding the water cream on top of that to sort of seal things in and if my cheeks are feeling extra dry for some reason then I have no problem using petrolatum. I am a lover of petrolatum so I have no issues mixing in a little bit of Vaseline or Aquaphor to the water cream and then applying that on my cheeks. Don't worry I don't do it in my t-zone because I do have an oily t-zone but I have no issues using petrolatum and it applies very easily onto my cheeks to provide an occlusive property. I also like to mix this with the Ordinary's Grand Active Retinoid 2% and Squalane. I think that this is a really great way to kind of incorporate vitamin A, retinols, or retinoids to your routine, especially if you have skin sensitivity. The um, water cream is definitely a good base to kind of like dilute these kind of products to kind of introduce these um, ingredients to your skin with without oversensitizing it. Another thing that you can do is that if you have a product that is just a little bit too potent for your skin to use on its own, the water cream is definitely a great base to dilute it in. So overall, I really love the Oatsy Simple Water Cream. I think that it is a very simple, a no frills, plain Jane kind of product that you can kind of use with any and all of the skincare products that you may already have. It's also an amazing way to kind of normalize and like simplify and of course, personalize your skincare routine. And for that, I really enjoy this product. Hopefully you enjoyed this review on Crave Beauty's Oatsy Simple Water Cream. Please let me know if there's any other products that you'd like me to review. Until next time.